Welcome to our latest episode, Corporate Ownership of U.S. Vacation Homes, Risks Withholding Tax for Foreign Investors. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how foreigners owning their vacation homes or any other personal use real estate in the U.S. for that matter, through a corporation can result in unintended tax consequences. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. Listen, the U.S. is a popular place for foreign high net worth individuals to own vacation homes. In fact, most of my high net worth friends and clients own vacation homes there. Hell, you might even own a vacation home there. But doing so comes with some tax consequences that need to be understood. I think everyone pretty much understands that if they own rental real estate in the U.S., they're going to have to pay U.S. taxes on the rental income. This is just logical. If you rent out your vacation home, for example, when you're not using it, or if you have a rental house in the U.S. that you sometimes vacation in, you're going to have to pay U.S. income taxes on the rental income. But owning U.S. real estate also comes with other tax consequences besides the income tax. The most notable is the U.S. estate tax. Foreigners are required to pay U.S. estate tax on the value of their U.S. assets, which includes real estate. So let's say, for example, a foreigner dies owning U.S. real estate. Their estate is going to be liable for U.S. estate taxes of up to 40% of the real estate's fair market value, less a small estate tax exclusion of $60,000. That's up to 40% of the value of your U.S. real estate, not the appreciation, the value. That means if a foreigner owns a vacation home worth, let's say, a million dollars, they're going to need to pay U.S. estate taxes on $940,000, one million value, less the $60,000 exclusion. Often, paying the estate tax means having to sell the vacation home. Additionally, foreign owners of U.S. real estate have FERPTA. To contend with. Now, FERPTA, I know it sounds like some sort of a disease. It's a tax disease. So FERPTA stands for the Foreign Investment and Real Property Tax Act of 1980. FERPTA is essentially a withholding tax regime designed to guarantee the payment of tax on gains when foreigners sell their U.S. real estate. See, before 1980, foreigners could buy U.S. real estate, sell it, make a gain, and just never pay the tax. And there wasn't much that the U.S. could do about it. So they enacted FRIPTA. Here's how it works. When a foreigner sells their U.S. real estate, the buyer of the real estate is required to withhold 10 to 15% of the sales price, depending on how much the sales price is, and pay that money to the IRS. You're only receiving 85 to 90% of the proceeds from the sale because the other 10 to 15% was paid to the IRS as a withholding tax. The withholding is even required if the property sold at a loss because withholding is based on the sales price, not the gain. In order to get any over withholding back, the foreigner has to file a U.S. tax return in the year following the sale for the year of the sale. If too much tax is withheld, they're going to receive a tax refund. If too little tax was withheld, they're going to owe more taxes. But the reality is tax is almost always over withheld because, like I said, Withholding is based on the sales price and not the gain. That means if a foreigner sells real estate in, let's say, February of this year, they're going to need to wait until next year until they can file a tax return and claim a refund. And then they're going to have to wait for the IRS to actually process the tax return and issue the refund. This can take a while, especially if the refund check, yes, because the U.S. still uses checks, has to be mailed to a foreign address. And then there's going to be exorbitant fees for depositing that check into a foreign bank and clearing it through that foreign bank and actually receiving the money. Now, there is a way to request what's known as a withholding certificate from the IRS that would reduce the required FRIPTA withholding to the actual tax due. But obtaining one is difficult and often takes as long as just waiting to file the tax return and getting a refund. The other problem with FRIPTA 
is that many buyers don't want to be responsible for the FERPTA withholding. So they avoid purchasing real estate from foreigners, which can greatly reduce the potential buyer pool. To solve both the estate tax and FERPTA issues, many foreign investors opt to purchase their vacation homes through a dual corporate structure. Now, the structure works like this. The foreign investor sets up a foreign corporation. The foreign corporation, in turn, sets up a U.S. corporation that purchases the real estate. So you have a foreign investor owning a foreign corporation that owns a U.S. corporation that owns the U.S. real estate. Now, this solves the estate tax issue because the only thing the foreigner actually owns is shares in a foreign corporation which are not considered U.S. property and therefore not subject to U.S. estate tax. And it solves the FRIPTA issue because a U.S. corporation owns the real estate, and so it's not subject to FRIPTA when the real estate's eventually sold. Sounds like a great solution. Well, for investment properties, this is often the optimal structure. But for personal use property like a vacation home, there's a hidden danger. The hidden danger is that you can't use corporate-owned property for personal use without paying fair market rent for it. If you do, the value of the personal use of the property will be treated as a deemed dividend from the U.S. corporation to the foreign parent company and subject to withholding at a rate of 30%, unless it's reduced by an applicable tax treaty. If you don't rent the house out and it is just for your personal use, it's likely the IRS would argue that you should pay rent for the entire year or that there's a deemed dividend equal to the annual fair rental value. So let's say, for example, you're a foreigner and you own a vacation home through the above described dual corporate structure with a fair rental value of 100,000 per year. You're either gonna need to pay the US corporation that owns the property 100,000 a year in rent and the US corporation is gonna have to pay tax on the profit from the rent or there's gonna be a deemed dividend of $100,000 from the US corporation to the foreign parent and subject to 30% withholding. So $30,000 in withholding tax. And that money's gone. There's no refund from that, right? It's just a pure expense. Now, you'd probably wind up better off renting the property rather than paying the withholding tax on a deemed dividend because you can deduct expenses from the rent. So you're only paying tax on the profit, which is most likely going to be less than 30% on the deemed dividend on the entire rent especially because the U.S. corporate tax rate is only 21%. Now, if you did rent the property out to third parties, you'd only have to pay rent for the time you use the property. Likewise, any deemed dividend would be limited to the value of the personal use days. Oftentimes, a trust structure is much more advantageous than the dual corporate structure for personal use property. But the trust needs to be properly structured or you'll still face a state tax and the possibility of FERPTA. And if you already own a vacation home in the U.S., contributing it to a structure could trigger tax. Purchasing U.S. real estate or contributing existing U.S. real estate to a structure requires careful analysis to determine the best strategy. Just to recap, we've discussed the U.S. taxes foreign investors in U.S. real estate must deal with, the pitfalls of the dual corporate structure for owning a U.S. vacation home, and that a properly structured trust may be a better option. For more information on the structures available to foreign investors in U.S. real estate, check out my guide to structuring U.S. real estate investment for foreigners. I put a link in the description. And for more information on the benefits of trusts and foundations, check out my trusts and foundations guide. I've also put a link to it in the description. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.